uh, Robbie, it's great to be talking to you today. Uh, you are a living le you are a living legend, man. I'm a big fan of yours. I don't know about all that, man. <laughs> no, de definitely, man. Definitely. I'm, I was very excited about this interview. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, I wanted to do it for a long time, but uh, I heard that you you don't do interviews. You know, you kind of like you 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 stay away from the from the media. So uh, when you know you agreed to do it, I was very excited. You know, really, man. I, the reason I have been have stayed away from the media because um, back in the in the day, you know, that's what you did. If you opened your mouth and said something, that you'd be like reprimanded. And I'm too old for that. I didn't really want to be bothering it even then. And to find myself in that situation, uh, it wasn't nice for me. I didn't handle it very well because of the fact that I'm from the South, and you. You had a whole different mentality than I mean people in all the areas. That's just how it was. I grew up in the swamps. I grew up with Indians, the Seminole Indians in Florida, see. So that's how I grew up. I grew up on a farm. I grew up already doing everything a bodybuilder was doing. And I wasn't even into bodybuilding that well. I, mean, I was using cement blocks and blocks and rope uh, inner tube tires and chins and things like that. So I just I just kind of really been all to myself. I've never really made friends in bodybuilding. I really associate myself with really is Chris Vermeer. Yeah. And how did you become a pro actually? In because uh, you won an IBB uh, pro league, right? How did you how did you get into that? And what did it take for you to get a pro card back then? See, you didn't have to get a pro card then. In those days, there was no such thing. So when I came into bodybuilding, I came through the AAU. The AAU was like the what is the amateur bodybuilding federation, and I start going to those shows, and then I was, you know, man, I was, I was really good at it. That's the only thing I can say. At that point, at that young age, I had a great physique. I had already had 20-inch arms, you know, small, as I say, genetic base for my parents, and I just took that genetic base and found the right tools to use on that genetic base and created my physique. That's amazing. I mean, um, you know, I got to be honest with you, looking at the old pictures, you know, vintage black and white pictures, from the 70s, 80s, you know, your physique was phenomenal. You know what I mean? Like uh, the, those, those pictures from Venice Beach, you know what I mean? Like it was so many different pictures of you and it was just like phenomenal. Uh, mm -hmm. The physique you know, was absolutely stunning. Yeah, Barry, you know, I just had this mindset that that you can create your body with your mind. I didn't think of it later on that there were other substances involved. When You know, I wanted what? So many competitions was crazy back in those days. But in those competitions, they weren't placing me one, two, or three. They would place me fifth. And in those days, they had body parts of one. I would, give, I would win all the body parts of one. So to me, I said, okay. <laughs> I didn't get upset about it. I didn't think it was racism, even though that it was that. Um, I just didn't allow myself to, what, they, what would you say, be mine. Couldn't mess with my mind. I couldn't. There's no way you can break that wheel, that mind thing that I was just toughened, you know, by the lifestyle and how I grew up. So I wouldn't allow you into this. And see, a lot of people, I think back in those days, still to this day, allow that to be fragmented. I won't let it happen. When I came out here in 75, after winning all this shit, I got a letter from Joe Weed. I was so proud. I was like, wow, I've come out and train with the Weeder boy. Uh, but I was all excited. I was thinking like, wow, finally I get my opportunity. And then when I came out here in 75 um, and showed the guys the letter, Joe Weeder want me to train with, you know, come out here and train with you guys. And they started laughing. <laughs> I thought, oh, okay. Something in the mirror came clean. So uh, I got out here and, you know, I had a certain amount of money, my plane ticket back home. Um, I set up an appointment. I went out to see Joe Weeder. I went out to see Joe Weeder. And his first, my first indoctrination of the bodybuilders, I don't give blacks contracts. Joe Weed, point blank. I don't give blacks contracts. And I was like, from that point on, I was devastated because in my course of there, you can't go back home and cry the white man. You can't do that. You can't go back because they think, in my course, they call him, he's a weak nigga. That's exactly how I grew up. You couldn't go back to my hometown, Tyler House, and tell everybody, oh, they wouldn't let me in there, man. You know, I, I failed. You couldn't do that. So I stayed out here. Um, yeah, I stayed out here in Venice, and I slept on top of Gold's Gym for weeks, okay? 
because I couldn't go. I knew that if I went back home, I would be whitewashed in my culture. You can't do that. So I s- took the grind. I stepped on top of Gold's Gym for weeks, months. And then I got uh, a guy named Michael, uh, uh, Michael Montgomery allowed me to start staying in his place. That gave me the base. Then I started getting exhibitions and seminars, you know. I was charging $500 at that time. I was getting $500 a pop. So I was able to kind of save my money and then move in an apartment because I still live in Venice, right across the street. So we had got an apartment. And then I started putting a little stuff in there through the money I was making as a, you know, doing all the exhibitions and seminars. But I never got a contract with Weeder. He never gave me a contract. So I, I want, Robbie, I want to ask you, so why did Joe invite you to go to Venice just to meet with him? Because I had a great physique. He just wanted to see I was taking pictures of my physique. I was taking pictures of my body. And when he, uh, when, I guess after seeing that, he sent me this letter and said, listen, come out to California. You know, I want you to train with the Weeder boys. And that's what I did. I took it as a word of honor, his honor. I didn't go in there thinking that the guy was going to say, hey, listen, I want to get a nigga's contract. It was far the same for my mind. So a lot of people that are going to watch this are going to ask, but Joe Weeder, I guess maybe not at that time, but later on, he did sign uh, many black athletes, right? Is that is that he he wasn't doing it at the time? He did it. He did it afterward. So not not at that time, but afterwards. I see what you're saying. Yeah, he did it. I think Ronnie Coleman got a a one million dollar contract. I think the first one was like six hundred thousand dollar contract. Wait, what about Sergio Oliva? Was he was Sergio Oliva? Was he with Joe Weider? I'm not sure. I think he might have been when they first started when he won the first two or three of Mr. Olympias. That could have been the case, but I I never got one. I mean, the people around me got contracts like. uh, I, 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 what was his name? Uh, uh, I can't call. It, I think maybe Sean Radim, uh, a few of the other guys that were guys, but of the guys that were coming through that Barry the Mayor, uh, what is his name? Uh, Paul the Lad, uh, the guys like that. I think by that time he was supporting and giving the guys contract because they're probably a lot more demanding. The press was now at that point. The guys were bigger, so that too probably gave him a lot of leverage. But you you had a great competitive career, right? I mean, you never won the Mister. You won the Masters, Mister Olympia, right? But you never won well, that the. Was my, that was my baby. I, I um, I kept saying to myself, "You you got to win one sandal. You have to come out of this <laughs> with one sandal." So I was in. I was. Li- I lived in Europe for twelve years because I got suspended for two lifetimes. I didn't suspended from an IVB. Yeah, I got suspended for two lifetimes. Why, why did you get suspended? The, the, the reason why that was because of the fact that I was verbal. You know, I grew up in the South, and it's something not right. You say what's on your mind. And so I said what's on my mind to, I get, I think Rick Wayne, I did a report with Rick Wayne, and I just told him, I said, hey, I said, um, they want me to get big. I said, I'm not going to take the excess amount of uh, substances that you need to get like that. I just want to stay the way I am. And from that point on, Joe Weider started using my body with his different things in his magazines. And I thought about it. I, I called him on and said, hey, you can't do this. And he said, you can, I can do whatever I want. I mean, who's going to believe you? You're black. But see, this is how they could talk to you in private. You can't say too much. You can't go out there and say, hey, this person said that. So I just kept to myself with the whole thing in my own mindset. But I, I just, I mean, I love bodybuilding. But the people that run it, I don't have too much respect for them. Joe Weider, he helped a lot of people after I came through there. But my whole concept of Joe Weider is just not a good person. Even though may his soul rest in peace, uh, I don't have I don't have the respect I would like to have for him. So yeah. it, it seems like you've experienced um, a lot of racism, lot of right? Racism. In in the you bodybuilding know, specifically. You know, that my when I competed, my paychecks were always short. I, I, I didn't quite understand it at first. Where that two of myself and Richard Smarry were on. Richard Smarry got his 10000 every time because we were on, this, on, on the Zaya BB tour. And to being on that tour, you get paid ever so often. My paycheck was $6,000 for second place. His paycheck was $10,000 for second place. He got his 10000 every time. Mine came up short several times. I couldn't say nothing to the the person that's running, who was weighing to me at this point, I couldn't say too much to him. I just had to eat it. So I just, that's when I'm like really a quiet person. I say to myself, I didn't want to bring all these things up, but I have, I did, I just, uh, I encountered a lot of racism in that business. And I'm not talking anyone down. I don't have no bad feelings. I don't think that 
um, <laughs> um, uh, what is it? Uh, 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 what they what do they call it? I'm not one of those people that is out there verbalizing and trying to make other people feel bad or put other people down. I mean, what's going on the way back live matter thing? That that to me, what kind of spurred me on to come out and say, talk about these things. You know, you can't. You you you. you I, I don't. What, the black life thing. I don't understand. I don't understand what's happening now that was still happening back then when I was alive, when I was younger. It's, it's the same thing going on, Val. It hasn't changed. And I was I was going to ask you. Do you do you think because you you were obviously growing up in the in in America, right? In 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 the fifties and sixties, you you witnessed a lot of the stuff. So. I was going to ask you. Obviously, there's, there's there's a lot of things happening right now that brought up a lot of these issues back on the surface. Yeah, that's what it is. Do, it do you feel like do you, do you feel like it's it, it's gotten better progressively, or do you think uh, things kind of remain the same, racism wise? What, what what happened is they they start to come up with all these ideas and values and making changes, and then if you notice, it all goes quiet. And see, that's why it's happening now. These kids now are young, and they say, "Hey, the hell with that." I don't want to deal with this anymore. I mean, I can understand they feeling stressed out and hurt and angry, but I don't think you go out there and burn buildings down. That's not what you're trying to fight for. You're trying to fight for equality here, a better uh, jobs, uh, more recognition. I mean, every life matter. <laughs> That's how I see it. But come on now, the subject now, Black Lives Matter. I mean, it should to some degree. I, I've been pulled over by police law for they're nasty. No disrespect. They aren't all bad people. It's like the guys out there marching and protesting. They are not all bad people, but it's the same with the police. But I mean, if you're in a group like that, I mean, if I was a police officer and I saw somebody that misdoing the thing that's going to get me 20 years in prison, I would say, hey, dude, what's your problem? You're going to get me in jail, too. I'm going to lose my benefits, too. But see, they don't stand that bell. They just let sit back there and look at this and let it happen because they can't move either. If they do, just like the lady tried to stop a guy. I'm reading the information. I read everything, Belle. And what happened with her? She gets fired. That don't make sense to me. Come on now. If she had to let him go through, she go to jail too. Why should she go to jail? I don't understand the mentality of the guys. I really don't. I don't understand it. No way would I let that sucker get away, kill the damn man. And I'm sending that look. I'm saying, hey, dude, check, hey, check it out, man. You know, give it a break. If you don't like, you don't like me. Hey, it's my life. I got a family too. So those guys are gonna be in jail for a long time for what? We're not saying, hey, dude, check it out. Stop that crazy. Roll him over. Do something. Pump his heart. Come on. It don't make sense to me. See, I see myself in that position, too. I, it flashed me back to uh, when I was a bodybuilder. And when Joe Weider told me he wouldn't give me a contract, I became pissed. But I said, you can't do nothing crazy here. Regroup yourself. Get us out of yourself. Calm yourself, because that's what I did. I calmed myself. And I still went back and bodybuild. I guess you say I had a great career. I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it. There was a lot of great time. I enjoyed bodybuilding. I still enjoy it to this day, Val, you know, just like a kid. I still go to the gym, 4 o'clock in the morning, bumming and blitzing with Michael. <laughs> with Michael. Because I love the sport, love the sport man. I'm not going to sit there and put the sport down. It's a great art form. I mean, I, I, I really would like to work with all the guys that are serious about it and want to get their bodies in shape. Uh, I think it's an easy thing, but you just need to learn the, all the values and the knowledge and put it into work. And what I'm seeing on YouTube and Instagram, I'm seeing a lot of people out there describing and demonstrating exercises. But in my mind, no disrespect to them. To me, that's not bodybuilding. Throwing weights around, dropping weights, throwing weights on the floor. That's not impressive to me. Going in there, training, getting everything in the right order, you know, educating the kids out there because they need to be educated. Everybody come to me Val, about drugs and they want me to do a drug. I said, no, I don't do no drug plan. Well, I give you this I said, I don't want your money. But this happens to me often throughout, you know, my daily uh, working on the Internet. And it's, it's, it's not what bodybuilding is about. It's not about drugs. It's about going in there and training yourself, eating properly, getting your rest, learn the basic exercises. Learning what body position is, learning what the man, the muscle thing really means. And once they start doing it, I think you're allowed to see a lot of bodybuilders coming out of the network. They need to do that. Seriously. It's interesting. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because, you know, the, um, a lot of people, you know, they love Joe Weider, right? Because of he kind of built the industry, right? So um, I guess I've heard, I've heard some things about him before that were kind of questionable, you know, but you're the first one on the record that's actually 
you know, saying that he was a good person. Obviously, it's an opinion. People have opinions, of course. So I mean, I he was a good person who he want to be a good person to. Mm -hmm. That's how I. That's how I would. But see, I, as I say, I was verbal. I did. I didn't allow that kind of mistreatment. I've, I've already grown through that in the South. So why should I want to come out here to another whole another level and endure that same kind of mistreatment? Come on now. Do you think? That, that uh, do, do you think other other bodybuilders they 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 were okay with the if he was if they were mistreated by by him or whoever else they kind of took you know, it this, I, I think this sean ray was verbal see, see that's why sean <laughs> don't miss those here. sean will tell you point blank mouth hey come on now no i don't want to hear that he's still that way today when we all competed in the Arnold classic the year that he was disqualified we all were on drug i was on the same thing he got busted for it didn't make sense to me. So I know that it's all it all boils down to that point where, you know, he can manipulate that thing however he wanted. He's Joe Weeder. As he said to me, I'm Joe Weeder. Who's gonna believe you? That's just how it was. It, it you not putting him down, not making him a bad person, but I don't have respect for Joe Weeder. I lost it. I lost it in the midst of the chaos and the bad feelings and me being suspended for two lifetimes. My wife at that point worked at Weeders. She was, I don't want to say Malala, she was mixed black and white. She worked out there for two years. But boss Alan Dolphin hounded that lady every day. Why are you with that nigga? Every single day, why are you with that nigga? She went over, I hate to say that, Val, but that's what happened. It's, just, it's a true history. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you about that. I wouldn't come online and say those things if it wasn't true. She, right, she ended up, Val, you might not believe she ended up Psych war. It broke her down. It broke her down. She's still living in LAD. I still contact her, talk with her, but there's nobody there. Young, beautiful woman. Okay? But that's what that's how racism is. She they they went after her to hurt me. That's how we both figured it out over the years. I, they couldn't break me, Val. That's what the problem was. They want to break me here. I go out and lose it. Not happening. I'm still here. <laughs> That's how I see it. I hear you. I guess a, a lot of people that are, are they're gonna watch this interview, um, they might. I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying what you're saying. You, you have your opinion, so the, we have to respect it. Obviously, I'm saying a lot of people. The, a lot of audience. Our audience are gonna watch it. They're gonna say, "Well, you know, there were many, many uh, African American Mr. Olympias right after that." So they're gonna say, "Well, he couldn't be that racist." You know, what I'm saying people are gonna say that, like as a, as a counterpoint to what you said. You know what I mean? Yeah, because they weren't there. They don't understand it. I, I tell you what I did, Val. I took and posted a piece directed from the newspaper here in Los Angeles. And the article was talking about white privilege, right? But I posted it on my page because I wanted to see how people react. I got like over four, 500 messages. A lot of them telling me to go back to <laughs> go find another country to go to. I served this country. I served in the army. I had 48 jumps. I don't have to go anywhere. And this is what I told a lot of them. I said, there is a white privilege. There's nothing wrong with it. But I think in that white privilege, a lot of people abuse it and misuse it. I don't care. I'm one of those people. I don't care what people say about me. I don't care what you think. I lived through that crisis. It's in my book. And Robbie Robinson, Robbie Robinson, the Black Prince, is in my book. And see, this what they tried to do was shut the book down, too. This book won a... Reader's Digest Award. See, people didn't like that because I was still evolving and getting better. I was still making myself uh, uh, overcome all these things that had happened to me in the past. I don't have no, I don't have no bad feeling. May his soul rest in peace, but I don't have respect for Joe Biden that much. It's just like what's going on in America. It, it hasn't changed. And the people don't want it to change there. If they did, they would get up. You, I'm seeing now for the first time in my life so many whites out there marching. Now I'm impressed. But just to see blacks out there marching, ain't nothing too much is going to happen. If, if there are changes that come about, hey, hallelujah. People don't really want that to happen. They don't really want it. If they did, they would work together as a team. What about dialogue? What about communication? Why not go in there and try to make a stand and say, hey, listen, get a group from people and talk about this situation. Hopefully you can draw closer to each other. I'm finding right now more white people on the streets in Los Angeles speaking to me than ever spoke to me in my life. And I don't even know them. 
So I'm thinking, I'm, I'm serious. I think that I was like, wow, I'm impressed. They're starting to change. <laughs> that, that's how I see it. I mean, you have to be Man, you can't stay the same. To me, that's a person that's not growing. You got to change to get better. The same as with bodybuilding. You have to change. If you don't make any change, how can you expect the body to become better? It's not possible. You have to make changes. You got to be work toward a better you than your old you. This is why I see things. That's what I see in, in today. I see the kids out there fighting, black and white, Spanish, and all kinds of races. And I, I'm impressed because when I was coming through the wreck, you had to fight that battle by yourself. And then you're going to get pushed out into the ocean. Nobody's going to want you or have you around them, long whatsoever. 